everyone. Welcome to Remote STEM class. Mr. Dowd here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Monday. And I hope you guys all uh, got outside this weekend because it was okay weather. But hopefully you just got outside to get outside, you know. Uh, warm, weather's good. warm weather's on the way. Anyways, uh, so last class we started our 3D modeling of our location from the National Park. Remember, you don't have to do the whole National Park. I don't expect you guys to 3D model the Grand Canyon. What I do expect you guys to do, however, is pick a location and 3D model it. So as I said last class, I'm doing Dry Tortugas, which is a hexagonal um, a hexagonal fort. So I left off with the hexagon. All right, so now next, I'm going to add in these little points that come off. I don't. These have a real name. I don't know what they are, but they do have a full name. So let's edit the scribble again and let's make some offshoots. I think I made this one a little thick. That's okay. Right. And press done. How's that look? Top down view. That looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to make this stick out a little bit. This one needs to come out a little bit longer. All right, cool, cool, cool. So the fort isn't that thick. It's like about that. First off, it's also red. Or more like a dark red because it is made out of brick with grass on top. So next what I'm going to do is so I got the brick color I'm gonna I'll add to that later um, and you see at the top there's all grass growing I'm gonna go ahead and copy this control C oh <laughs> that's for a different project control C and then control V so I'm gonna make this taller and I'm gonna line these up I use this tool a lot if you didn't notice cool and let's make this Thinner. Let's make that one. And what's the height of this? 12. So let's move this down to. Oh, that's what I want. want. The other piece. To move up to 12. And we'll color it a lighter green. Alright. Cool. And there's green all in the middle also. So what I can do is click on this project or this scribble, the big scribble, right? And edit this. Oh, actually, no, I can't do that. Never mind. I was going to say I could edit it and color this all in green. However, it, uh, Actually, no, don't want that either. How can I make this all green? I guess I could put it onto a green surface itself, have a square in there. Or actually, is there a, I think there's a tool for that, polygon. You know what? I'm gonna undo everything I already did, just like that. I'm instead going to use just the polygon itself this a lot shorter let's see make it 20 and now let's make another polygon make it bigger make it taller make it go through make it a hole and let's line these up so that way remember before when i drew it it wasn't symmetrical it just didn't look right that's what's cool about this program is you can keep editing it as many times as you want to get the exact look you want. Make that a little smaller. 
Reline that up. That's why I give you guys 10 days to do these projects. They don't take 10 days, but uh, it's okay if you make mistakes. And then to cut, we just group. Cool, so I made a perfect hexagon. I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So that looks a little better to me. Let's just make it bigger. And then make it smaller that way again. Cool. So next class, I'll go ahead and redo what I just did and make these crenellations. All right, guys. Hope everyone has a fantastic Monday. I'll see you again on Tuesday. Bye. Good morning, Gators. Today I'm going to make some banana bread because I have some very ripe bananas. So, what can you do with ripe bananas? You can freeze them, smoothies, if you're not going to use them right away, or you can make banana bread. Because they're nice and mushy. So, so I'm going to put the mix in. Need a spoon. One third cup of water, one egg, now it says I can use one or two mushed bananas, and if I really like banana flavor, I can use three. It's kind of a lot. I think I usually use two. You see how mushy bananas are when they're not? When they're overripe, that means we can use them in things like the mango. Well, I'm gonna let my daughter up because he's freaking out. So this is two bananas. So you want it to be nice and mushy to get all the powder out. The oven can be on 350. Choose good, it makes it nice and moist. If you really like bananas and you want to show, you could put a third one in. This is what it looks like all mixed up. Spray the pan. oven for about 40 minutes. This is the extra ripe banana. I can throw it in the freezer and then use it some other time. All right, so I'm going to do about 35-40 minutes until it's all brown on the outside and um, cooked on the inside with a toothpick.
All right, see you later. Hi guys, today we're going to be finishing up our orange cat, well my orange cat. You might be doing a different kind of a cat or a different animal altogether, which is great. But I'm going to continue working on my cat and I'm almost done. But there's still a couple of things I want to add because it's not quite looking finished yet. I have my reference picture so I can look at that. Okay. So on my palette so far, what I have is just a little bit of orange and red mixed up. The other paint kind of dried up a little bit. But I'm gonna mix up a little bit of a dark orange. But this time I'm not using blue because I don't want it to be super dark. I'm just gonna add a little bit of red, which will make it a reddish orange and it will also slightly darken that orange that I have there. So I'm gonna be using this orange and I just want to go in and add a little bit of this darker orange to some spots. Just a little bit. So I'm washing all that paint off my brush and now I just want to go in with a little bit of water. And that will actually kind of lighten up that orange a little bit as I spread it out in this area. There we go. Also going to add a little bit of that darker mixture just above the pink part of the nose. And I'm going to wash that paint off my brush again and just kind of spread that paint up a little bit. Just so it kind of lightens up a little bit as I pull the brush up. It'll just bring that some of the orange paint up a little bit. Let's see, a little darkness there, and maybe I'll do a little more orange down here. And I'm looking at my reference picture to see where else I need to add a little bit of darker colors. Seems like there's a little bit more darkness over here. And over here. I'm going to go in with a little just a little more darkness above the eye as well. And same thing on the other side. Okay, I'm liking how it looks. I'm just going to go up and do a little bit more darkness in the ear area. So now I'm going to grab a little bit of that blue. I'm using the blue to give the orange a little bit of a darker look where I want it to look like a darker value of orange or where I want it to look like a shadow. So I'm just going to put a little, little tiny bit of blue and a little bit tiny bit of the orange mixture. I'm going to give my kitty some little nostrils with that new mixture of that blue and orange and again i'm looking at my reference to make sure that i place those nostrils 
in the right spot. There's also a little tiny space just under the nose before the cat's mouth that I want to do in this color as well. There, I might darken in a little bit more too around the eye area here with that color. And I'm using a very small brush for this. All right, maybe a little touch more darkness in that ear area. Just a little. And I think I might do a little bit of darkness under, under here a little bit, just to kind of make that part pop out a little. And then I'm going to go in and do a little bit of some whiskers there, and then we'll be done with this cat. All right, so I need to get a little bit of white paint. And I'm going to use my thinnest brush. So again, I'm using Apple Barrel and there's also Craft Smart paint. So I'm using that acrylic paint to do this. They also make paint pens where you can use this, but I like to use my brush. But you can get paint pens where you can get some nice thin lines with those. Oops. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of white paint and go in and I see that this kitty has some little strands of white fur in the ear and then his whiskers are white. So I'm gonna to try to do that and get something similar looking to this real, this kitty in the photo. So it's good to have a reference nearby. All right, let's see if I can get some little skinny whiskers in here to start. Like how that looks all right so I'm just kind of looking at my photo looking at the cat and just making sure that I added all the colors that I wanted to add and see if I need to change anything before I decide that I'm finished so I'm just looking that there is a little bit of darker orange on the sides of the nose of this kitty all right I'm gonna stop right there I hope you enjoyed painting your rock, and next time we're going to be painting a shark. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.